Welcome back to The Year Is Podcast, a podcast with me, Bobby Mayer, and fellow comedian Red Richardson, where we travel back in time to a year in history, talk about the weirdest, the most interesting, and fucked up things from that year. Today, it's actually very shocking we've been able to record this episode mm -hmm. because Red has been peeing constantly. I uh, pee. I've been peeing more because I've been drinking loads of coffee. Um, but Bobby has a problem with people peeing. So we've been on tour. We've been this last week. Where were we? We were in Hull. We were in Castle. And Manchester. Yeah. And Red gets in the car on Saturday. And 10 minutes in the drive, he's like, can we stop? I need to get some water and pee. <laughs> and I was like. I mean, you could have. Water is definitely something you can bring with you. Yes, I could have brought that with me. But I'm not going to bring a cup in your car, and I don't have any bottles at home. You don't have any bottles at home? Not anymore. I think I've been recycled. Um, but I, I peed before. I think it's because you hate peeing so much. It makes me nervous. Then I need to pee more. I don't hate peeing. I hate stopping seven times on a seven-hour journey. I, we did. We did. We drove to Barnard Castle and we went stopped twice, which yes. is a six-hour journey. But if I would have, if I would have stopped when you wanted me to, yeah. we wouldn't have made it there in time. <laughs> we wouldn't have because remember we got there fifteen minutes before showtime. Show time, yeah. So that's fair enough. But it's. I think. Well, like, what did you see? You said that me and Harry have, uh, we were, we were spoiled by being allowed to pee a lot when we were kids. <laughs> no, there's like a condition that people have where they, where they, they, they feel any urge to pee and they think that means they really have to pee, but actually it means they could pee. And I don't think you know the difference. I think it's, it's the coffees. I had eight on Sunday. That's too many. So, uh, when we were in Liverpool, uh, we got a few dates, uh, for long distance dates. So I'm gonna slow down on the coffees. I think I'm just surprised you didn't shit yourself having eight coffees. Yeah, but I'm not really eating. <laughs> <laughs> so you're wait, but aren't you on a health kick right now? So your health kick is drinking eight coffees yeah, and having no food, and you think that you're that's making you healthier. <laughs> I'm really nervous and tired. I don't know what's happening. No, it went out the window this weekend. We had donuts on Sunday. We had three each. From that disgusting place that you nearly killed us getting to because you saw it and swerved. What's it called? What place that you said about? in Canada when we got the donuts. Tim right? Hortons. I've never heard of it. It's a, it's the biggest donut franchise in Canada, and I saw one in Manchester, and we went for it. Bobby looked so excited when we saw it. I've never seen you look that happy. Yeah, that's because... <laughs> and then they were disgusting. Well, they weren't great, were they? No, the Tim Hortons donuts in Canada are good, but they haven't. it hasn't translated they have over. A, you know, different chef. Unless they want to sponsor this podcast, then actually I'd say <laughs> Tim Hortons donuts are delicious. Yeah, and I want like... to put them in me. <laughs> no, it was good. We've had a good time. Hull um, was... Well, you didn't think it went well for you. No, I didn't. I, and the reason I thought that is because they stared at me for the entirety of my set. And then usually, for people that don't know, when you're opening for someone, what, what usually happens is no matter how you do as an opening act, the etiquette is you come off stage and you tell the, the person whose show it is, they're great, they're going to love you, they're really nice. Two days in a row, Red Richardson came off stage and just said, they're fucking terrible, <laughs> you're, they're, you're going to have a terrible time, they're a shit audience and I hate them. Yeah, basically. And then they turned out to be nice in the end. Well, they were, no, 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 I did well, you did badly, that's what happened. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and, but, but you actually, in a hall, you thought it was bad, so then I said to the audience, Red thought you hated him, and then I made you come out at the end, and the audience all told you they loved you. Yeah, they just don't show it while you're on. But, you know, that might be that what was nice you're guy, doing. Pod listener. Uh, there was Fav four <laughs> podcast listeners Favis in Favors and his wife, who was a very nice lady. Yeah. Said she had a great time. So thank you, you guys. You uh, you made me feel better. And the two girls, the two German girls whose names I didn't get, they were great. Yeah. It was the polar bear in a hole. Um, the staff were lovely. The audience uh, almost wanted to make a climate that would be fit for a polar bear, is what I felt. Cold. Yes, very cold. So, um, yeah, next time, if you like me, please uh, tell your face, because it, it starts playing on my mind. Red, it's just funny to be on a podcast and beg people who might be at gigs in the future to laugh. Yeah. If you're at a gig and I'm on stage, please laugh. Yeah. If please. You, if you like me, but your reaction to comedy is to sit there and glare, do not come. Come, actually. Still come. Well, sit, no, come, pay the money, sit at the back in the dark so I can't see your face because it distracts me. 
And I can always remember the faces of people who didn't laugh. Like I could be 90 and not remember my wife's name, but I could paint their faces perfectly. You can't paint. No, I can't. I can't even draw. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be a picture. I'll just draw it like a, a cock. Have you seen that recently? Kanye he's sent Pete Davidson just a picture of a dick. <laughs> that was quite funny. Good way to deal with your uh, 28-year-old uh, new boyfriend of your ex. I really do think that when Kanye West made that music video mm. where he's holding Pete Davidson's head, mm. it was like it was like OJ mm. in 1993. Like what, that's what I thought. Like, if OJ had access to a music video yeah. to act out his feelings. So imagine if he killed Pete Davidson and then used the hologram he made of Rob Kardashian Cena for Kim's birthday. Do you remember that? That's defends him. Defends him in court <laughs> and gets him off. That would be quite good, actually. <laughs> but then the hologram goes on. So they get David Schwimmer, who played him in the TV show, to be <laughs> yeah, the hologram. Yeah. <laughs> Runs out of batteries halfway through. <laughs> yeah, but there's just so much evidence on Kanye, I think. Also, they're going through a custody battle, but he's just sort of tweeting like this. And the lawyers must be like, thank you. Oh, yeah, it's going to be tasty. Yeah, they're absolutely loving it. But uh, Manchester was great on Sunday. We had a great time. Yeah, Manchester was great. I take everything back I've said about the place um, before. <laughs> it was great. I've never had a good gig there. But Sunday really, really changed my opinion. It's weird. It's you sort of. I now base every place in the world on how well they receive my comedy. <laughs> Red hates a lot of cities. <laughs> so there's about two places I can go now. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I hate the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we have a guest today. We do. Uh, and uh, should we introduce our guest? We should introduce our guest. Okay. She's been on television. She has. Live at the Apollo. Our guest, who will appear in a second, is Helen Bauer. The year is with Red and Bobby. So, special guest, Helen Bauer. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very, very well. It's very just well. nice to be here. Yeah, you're a first uh, female guest. No. Yeah, we've Am I your third guest ever as well? Yeah, but we, we've had, yeah. I feel like if you had like 50 men in a row and then me, you could make it a thing. But like, this isn't, mm -mm. it's not a thing. No. Do you know what I mean? No. Right? I, I'm agreeing with you. I don't know why you said that. I don't know what? either. But it's nice to be here. It's I'm a fan of the podcast. Okay, good. I'm good. excited. We had you on because we wanted to talk about 1997, and it might be, for both of us, one of the most important years of our lives. I'd say triggering as well. I think it's going to be hard for us to discuss it. You've, well, you've worn the sweater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For listeners, uh, Helen Bauer is wearing a Princess Diana jumper. Uh, it's got three images of Diana on it. Um, it does refer to her as a princess on it. Personally, I prefer Lady. Yep. Um, that's a personal choice by me. Okay. I feel like she was not part of a royal family through her own choosing. Yep. I don't think she ever chose to be in it as a child. Well, she did choose to be yeah, in she, it. Bobby, please. Was, she was I mean, coerced. She... she was coerced. Okay. <laughs> she fancied him. You can't help who you fancy. And she just coincidentally happened to fancy a prince. Okay. Uh, okay. It happens to all of us. Now, yeah. do the three images represent different times in her life? Is there? No, any... it's just. I think it's just like three stages of fuckable Diana. There's only two pictures on that jumper. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. You'd think I'd have looked at it before today. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I never look down because my tits like eclipse her. So when I look down, all I can see is Diana and a bit of a tiara. <laughs> I always assume there was another Diana down here, but there isn't. You never looked at. Well, I can't see Bobby. I've got big tits. Yeah, but at some point the shirt's been off of your body well really <laughs> i'm not taking this off until she's avenged <laughs> and this is just two sta stages of very fuckable diana this is a fuckable diana going to work out and this is a fuckable diana around an event well yeah so you're yeah. a big diana fan then <laughs> <laughs> aren't we all yeah, yeah. i mean, mourned her you did actually i know this baby boy you took it really badly I, right it was my first public death that really hit me i was 11 uh, when Diana died, I Rest was so peace. sad, I cried. Mm -hmm. I bought every magazine with her picture on it. Did you actually? 
Yes. Really? This is quite be creepy. Respectful, in the right way. Thought, be respectful. There, there was also a, a single release of Elton John's Candle in the Wind. Mm-hmm. The 1997 version. version. Yeah. With only, I think, one song on the CD. And I bought two copies. <laughs> Goodbye, England's Rose. Yeah, and he changed a couple words. <laughs> um, he, he more than a couple. It was very good. That was from Marilyn Monroe, wasn't it? Yeah, but here we write it for anyone for 100 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just... <laughs> I wonder how much you have to pay Elton John to make it. He'll do it for me. He'll do it for me if I... <laughs> he did it for Gaddafi, didn't <laughs> that would have been actually amazing. Do you yeah. imagine? <laughs> no, it's the 31st of August 1997, obviously a big day. And I know that everyone thinks that Diana's death affected them. I was in France. Mm. I was oh. in Paris. No. School in holidays. Tunnel. Yeah, in the tunnel. Jumping in front of a car that was well, speeding and making a crash. Seeing as there were nine cameras on the tunnel that night and they all turned off, one of them 20 minutes before. Coincidence? I don't think so. Is that true? Uh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> this, is what, this is the thing. Like, 100%. She was killed by the Queen because she was having a Muslim baby. And that's never been officially released, but I know it because I feel it. And I just, you know when you like, you know. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. So there were there were three lives taken that four lives taken that night. Yeah. And I feel that what happened is she got in the car, she knew there was gonna be an accident in the car, she left in her diary a message for her butler saying, I'm really worried something's gonna happen with the car. I think they're gonna kill me. And then also last year a film called Spencer came out where the fifth line in it was her turning down the lens and saying, I'm late. Do you think they'll kill me? It all makes sense, right? No, but she meant kill me like, oh, people you know, when you go, Oh, I could kill you. It's- she I'll might. say that to her dead Bobby. Okay. Bobby. <laughs> to her dead her Bobby. Dead Bobby. <laughs> to her dead Bobby. I'm her alive Bobby. Who's her dead Bobby? She has another Bobby. She's got so many dead Bobbies. <laughs> say that to her dead body. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, why didn't she get a cab then if she was so worried? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... She can't just get a cab. She's she's Diana. She can't get a taxi. Yeah, yeah she, she has might to have a driver. She, she has to have a driver. But it's not the driver's fault. They tried to blame it on the paparazzi. It's not their fault either, actually. Mm. They didn't help. But if there's nine cameras... In central Paris, looking at one tunnel, and they all turn off that evening, the key one 20 minutes before. Mm. That's a fucking plan. Why wouldn't they just shoot her, though? The crash is a bit extreme. We can't shoot her, Red. Because then it's obvious. <laughs> if you turn off all the cameras, and it's like, oh, there was a crash because there was too many cameras, and the guy who was driving was drunk, which he wasn't. Was well, he not? I thought we had like three bottles uh, of one. It's all rumour. Okay. It's all rumour. Spread by Kate Middleton, because she's jealous of Megan. Ooh. So what they would have done, guys, the Queen... and then like three weeks later, they released Titanic the movie. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. Distraction. <laughs> all fucking distraction. And we were fucking distracted by it. You Helen, know? when you talk about Diana intensely, your eyes cross. <laughs> and, uh, I gotta say, it looks like something's really wrong. Like when you were talking intensely, your eyes started to cross, and you look insane. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen you so passionate about anything in my life. I just think Diana, she would have, she would have loved this, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, can you imagine if she was still living, how good her podcast would be? Oh, yeah, she'd have a podcast. Oh, it'd be she? so good. She'd get RuPaul, like, you know? Yeah. She'd, yeah, yeah, interview injured animals. And I feel like we're not forgetting about her. But it's been 25 years, and all they're doing is adding more shit in Kensington Gardens for her. What do you want to do? not enough. Day of National Mourning on the 31st of August. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, that's doable. So what you're saying is... Ideally the, led by Meghan Markle. The, the queen. A long weekend. You want a long weekend for Diana. Yeah. And we all put on a tiara and get drunk. Yeah. And we all walk through landmines to get a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> do you think... That, so the Queen would have said to the driver... What I want you to do. Oh, Red. <laughs> the Queen did not speak to the driver, but Red carry doesn't on. understand how these things work. <laughs> Very droll. Very droll, Red. No, but I'm... carry on with your theory. Yeah. No, how do you think it happened? I'm genuinely curious. I think she got in the car and they, they crashed because they were speeding away from paparazzi and going too fast and they crashed. That's a theory. <laughs> it's a theory, but then explain everything around it. I think what happened was uh, what Red said, actually. I think that's true. <laughs> But then why would she have written in her diary that she was scared about something happening with the car? Because she had why mental health problems. Why would all the cameras problems. have turned off? She had mental health problems. Why would um, she? 
And I think she lived in a figure because she well, was a public figure. it's very easy so to f- blame mental health problems. I don't know how being a passenger in a car and having mental health problems means that you should die. Well, Helen, <laughs> Helen I got to say, I've driven in a car with you in the back seat. <laughs> and a couple hours into it, I've thought about driving onto the other side of the road. I was very so that, good. So I was ve- I didn't sing uh, once. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Do I know. Sp- I just... You were good. You asked if you could sing, and I said no. And then I asked three times, because I'm not that familiar with consent, and each time you said no, I took it. And then Harriet had a chat with me before the journey back from Devon about not asking, because it could be a trigger. (laughs) So I didn't ask, but I sung in my head whilst rocking back and forth. What (laughs) What were you singing? Candle Candle in the Wind, the the 1997 version. Also. Also, with Diana, I don't think, because of the whole Camilla Barker Bowles, there was three of us in that marriage, so it was a bit crowded. (laughs) I don't think the Queen was the one who initially planned it. I think Camilla does have something to do with it. (laughs) But it wasn't them. It was them going to, like, MI5 or 6. I never remember the number. So they just got off the tube at Vox. Or Or 7. Shut up, is there an MI7? Could be. No, there's not. (laughs) I don't know. Oh, I bet there fucking is. And I bet they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, I think that they would have gone to them like, solve the Diana problem. Yeah. And they'd have been like, okay, solve it. Because think about it. She knew about Prince Andrew. Did she? A hundred percent. Oh. Oh. We're hearing it. And so how long have you I'm had I'm now these... really trying not to go cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to talk. It's just when you concentrate, your eyes point at each other. <laughs> That's not a good and thing. You, it's not a bad thing. It just means you concentrate way harder than but everybody else. I don't think else. when I concentrate is usually when I'm. I guess when I'm shitting, I concentrate. Yeah. I gotta say, so it did look like that face. Sitting in the bar, like. Sunil <laughs> 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 so just walking in, like, hello. Oh no! no, no. <laughs> what were you doing in Paris? Family holiday. Okay. Yeah. And so, how old were you? And I was six. Mm. I was okay. little. Mm. I was little. But I was also going through a sleepwalking phase. Oh, uh, well, I, I really... This think... is the thing. I'm worried that, like, I... <laughs> Killed her. <laughs> wandered into the tunnel and because she loves kids, swerved. <laughs> you know? That is an also a concern of mine. And then the queen was like, oh, brilliant. We don't have to do the whole shooting thing now. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of times when I'm driving, I just get this fear that I'm going to be driving and then someone's going to... A, a kid is going to be in the middle of the road and I'm going to have to choose between swerving and hitting the kid. Do you remember that thing? That was like when we grew up, that thing about like, oh, um, people like put prams in the middle of country roads. So when you're driving along, you see a pram, you stop obviously, and then you get out to look to see mm-hmm. if there's anything in it, but it's just an empty pram. But while you're getting out to look, a murderer gets in the back of your car, rides with you and then kills you on journey when you Did park that, up. that happened? That's what we always got told. Ooh. That's what we always got so told. So the moral of that story is if there's a if pram, you see a pram on the road, <laughs> run it over. No, you Don't lock stop. yourself in and you call. That's what we were told. I don't think it ever happened, but it was like a big <laughs> thing in our area. I think once the pram was left in the road um, and then everyone was like, it's a pandemic in itself. <laughs> I, think so, I think someone just abandoned their kid. <laughs> yeah, that's literally why. Don't say that because in my town they did find a baby in a bin. Very sad. What? Yeah, very sad. No. Mm. Well, it's still... No, dead baby. Oh, dead baby in bin. God. Very okay. sad. Very sad. Really fun podcast. Like. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> do, you, do you think um, Prince Charles is Prince Harry's dad? Yes. Well, no, there's the theory. That I know, the I know, guy. I know, I know the theories. Okay. You don't believe Diana uh, was having No, an they were both unfaithful. Yeah, both of, of them were. He started it. It takes I'll two say to that. tango. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Or four to tango in this case. I'm not, <laughs> I don't think she should be killed because she had an affair when her husband was having an affair from day one. Yeah, with okay. Camilla. And also with Camilla and I'm pretty sure a couple of other whores. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch The Crown then? Yes. <laughs> but you hate watch it. You're like, I hate all these people. This is the thing. My family are super anti-royal. Like they're not. So like when Diana died, we're in Paris. And like this woman at breakfast, like told my mum and like all the other English people were crying. And she was like, give a fuck. Like she couldn't care less. But I was the only one that was like, the princess is dead. Like yeah. th- this is the princess's dark. This is awful. And I couldn't, 
Yeah, I, I found it so sad. Do you think Meghan Markle will play herself in The Crown? <laughs> That would be life changing. Yeah. I'm that sorry, be... that just took a minute. I didn't even thought about that as a possibility. It, it's totally a possibility because they haven't even guaranteed they're doing up to that close. They, they will. They have, they have to. to. It'll be her return. Who's going to play Andrew? What me? I mean, you you've been on ITV two twice now. It's true. It's I've got a, quite a profile. A minute now. until Netflix come knocking. Yeah, <laughs> you would play Andrew. This thing you'd like... have to you'd have to lose twenty pounds to play Prince <laughs> <Yeah>. Andrew. <laughs> That'd be the one. Also. Figure out what it's like to be a pedophile. You yeah, know, that's yeah, the other yeah. part. Unless you think that he's already there was there was a great tweet about uh, I, I I can't remember the name who tweeted it, but it was around when all this stuff was happening, and they were like, uh, I really want to, uh, you know, that feeling when you really want to let someone know that uh, Jeffrey Epstein wasn't a pedophile; he was a hebophile. But by knowing that, you look like a pedophile. Wait, what's a hebophile? I think it's someone who's into teens. Oh my god, there's an actual word for that? Yeah, I thought but... it was all pedophile under no. 17 or something. Well, it, I this is what this tweet told me. <laughs> Listen, this is the state of the news now. It's like I'm quoting a tweet from a year ago as a fact. <laughs> I like it. I think I just never heard Hebefar before. So Jeffrey Epstein only wanted teens? Yeah. So do we respect him more for that? I don't know. No. I'm just saying no. it's a more specific word. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It is interesting. How do you feel when you see people playing Princess Diana? Do you get angry? No, I think she would have fucking loved it. And I, the more Diana stuff there is, the better. Because I'm worried there's generations who are growing up who didn't know about her. Okay. You but you're there spreading the good word. Ideally, yeah. I do think that, like, she she did so much for charity. Yeah. And she did a lot for charities that no one wanted anything to do with. Yeah, of course, it was a PR savvy move by her. And yes, she did walk through the landmines, which is a terrible choice. And yes, she did it twice because she didn't like the photos after the first time. But, but I respect that as a move. Yeah, but she didn't like, <laughs> she the, didn't like the photos. She did the photos. Were, were they actually? I also mines? feel in general we don't have that many famous bulimics, so it's kind of nice. I think we have most famous people are probably Amy Winehouse and Diana. There's yeah, there's others. They just keep it under wraps. Come I know, on. but like it's nice to have like a big one. You yeah. know, well, not physically. That's a shame. But like, but then then I see the the portrayals of Diana. Like they did a bulimia in the last film, but she had like one cake and one slice of pizza, and she was like, oh, I better throw. And it's like that's not like. Do you know what I mean? If you're Diana gonna, if was putting away a Domino's two for Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, gonna, there's no way. If you're going to binge into Purge, you're going to binge. Right? And then the other film, the one with Naomi Watts, where they just did her having an affair with a doctor. And it was like, okay, but there's so much more to this. You know what I mean? Mm. But it's fine. It's fine. I get they're getting the word out. It's just until we can, like, regenerate her body. It's just, it is what it is. You know? <laughs> Which will be coming up soon. But also, like, they're all fucking mad cunts. Like, I feel like the ones I feel bad for at the moment are Beatrice and Eugenie. Because their dad is a nonce, right? Yeah. And the aura heb hebophile. Because <laughs> yeah. their dad's a hebophile, which I'm sure they're gutted about. Like if I Well, was... they know that where they were, they are like, Dad, we've never been to a pizza express. Right? And the thing is if I found <laughs> if out If they have, they would have came out and said, Yeah, yeah, I remember. You know, they would have said, <laughs> yeah, Listen, this haven't. was the only But they're time. our age. Like, imagine if your dad was a nonce. You'd be gutted. I'd be so pissed off with Michael. It would be tough. I, it'd be really tough. And then it's so public. But then it's also like, Eugenie is just not reading the room. Like her Instagram, she's still wishing him like happy birthday, happy Father's Day. And everyone in the comments is like, fucking hell, babe. Like, just leave it for now. Like He did have to sell his uh, lodge in, in uh, he... Switzerland. Oh, God. That was uh, all optics. Well, you reckon he, he didn't? No, I'm sure he sold it. Do you it, not but... think they went to the Pizza Express? <laughs> no. I think <laughs> they did go to a Pizza Express remember. once. I think he went there once. No, this is before they really knew Andrew. This is before he, he was just like one of the princes, but no one gave Someone a shit. Someone would remember that day the rudest man I've ever met came in and I quit working at Pizza <laughs> Express. <laughs> and he wouldn't have to know it's Prince Andrew. He'd just be like, oh, that posh cunt <laughs> and his shitty fucking horse face daughters. Oh, I remember oh him. Oh my God. <laughs> How dare you? What, well, you're saying they're That beauties. is the niece of Diana. <laughs> no. She's not perfect, but she will be respected. <laughs> <laughs> if you... But yeah, they've got odd faces. Faces, don't they bless those girls um, well they've got yeah. posh faces it's the inbreeding and the horse riding is that what it is i think it's hundreds of years no that. it's because they think that beatrice looks a lot like victoria queen oh victoria, really is. yeah i've watched a lot of documentaries about queen victoria yeah, yeah. Your... i'm not a royalist but i've done a lot of research yeah, sounds, sounds like you <laughs> that's are. the problem because queen victoria you can link her to what's happening in russia right now okay 
Do you want me to do it? Go on. Okay. Remembering that I've got like one A level, I'm technically oh, really thick. Oh, don't worry. This podcast right? is... Uh... Okay. <laughs> if you think too hard, your eyes go crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Victoria. Queen. England. Married German Prince. Albert. Babies. Lots of babies. One. Marry Russian man. Okay. Okay. Tsar Nicholas II. Yep. In Russia. Has babies. And her babies, because of the inbreeding from Victoria marrying Albert and the line, had haemophilia, which yeah. is when your blood can't clot. So you're just super sick, like a super sickly kid. If you start bleeding, you don't But they stop. only had girls and this one boy, right? And they were like, this boy has to live, or like, it's all over. They're trying to make it live. And then she got so desperate because it couldn't live. She heard this rumor about this guy who could like heal anything. Rasputin. Rasputin yeah. from the Disney animated film. Anastasia. So then he <laughs> arrives, and then he's like, "I can fix it." But they get way too Are you just involved. Tell us the, the whole history of the world up until <laughs> no, Vladimir Putin. No, is that where this is yes. going? He gets really involved, and then now we've got a uh, war in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> you just, wow! You just skipped out like a hundred years. <laughs> Awful. St- there was a, they. Um, where there is was, Anastasia? There was no bread in Russia. Anastasia, and now they Germany. Got Chibata. They can't move for Chibata. Uh, they, they, they got. They had no bread. And then all the peasants revolted. Have you had this ciabatta bread? It's shit. No, it's great. And Why it, would you say that? Why are you being like that? It's so thick. Bobby ordered it and called it ciabatta. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I think the name is pretentious. I have to know how to say a new word. And it's people... I, even I know ciabatta, you fucking moron. She didn't correct okay. him. So we were in Manchester on Sunday and he went, can I have a ciabatta with eggs, please? And then she came to me. You could see her looking at him like, oh. And I went, I'll have a bacon ciabatta. <laughs> <laughs> He's educated. Yeah, of course you're a bacon, you fat cunt. <laughs> oh my god. Burn. Are you okay? I'm yeah. alright, I'm fine. Are you sure? He's we, used to this. Because you are we, big, my love. We so done, that must we, have we, we, we've done weeks of this. It just rolls off. <laughs> yeah, of course it rolls so off. So you had a sea of batter and you loved it. I loved my sea of batter. No, I didn't, because the bread's really thick. Okay, it's not it's never better than bread. Bread is great. It is bread. Yeah, but it's it's a thicker, like, you have to chew it more. I have things to do. I can't sit there chewing bread for 10 minutes. Why? How much do you have to chew it? What's wrong with your because teeth? Because it's thick. No, there's nothing wrong with my teeth. It's thicker. It's a thicker bread. Well, and what I we should it really do is annoying. blend bread up for you, Bobby, and just inject it into you. Would that save yeah. time? Or maybe you just don't deserve bread. Yeah, I don't if you're know, not willing to They've eat. They've already done that, actually. It's called bread sauce, and it's delicious. <laughs> it's good, actually. I fucking love bread sauce. You ever put bread sauce in a bread sandwich? <laughs> bread sauce on bread. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> That's a, all bread. Actually, um, Costa has started doing this amazing amazing thing where you can get a toasty there but it's a mac and cheese toasty okay it's bacon mac and cheese inside of bread nice. is, huh, do you want to fall asleep on the bus <laughs> i literally was like coming back from germany so tired so sick from just like smoking inside drinking all the time i was like what the fuck is this i was just eating it and i was like my heart is i can feel it stopping oh, you know when you can like you're like this is it yeah, for you're me. corroding your arteries in real time <sighs> Man, it was bad. But, you know, at least I know how to pronounce ciabatta. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And for ciabatta. No, no, the thing is, how do you... I think it's ciabatta. That makes sense. My There's dad's no like H. you. He's thick as shit. <laughs> and we went to a Mexican restaurant the other day and everything he got wrong. He was like, I'll have the quesadilla with um, chipotle. That's how you say it. <laughs> chipotle. Chipotle and chorizo. <laughs> I, like, chorizo. I can't to add to it, insult to injury. My dad's got Sophia Stan. So it was like he was really working to say Chipotle. It was like it's not worth it. And the guy was just looking at me, and I'm like, I don't. He's he's like he's got a learning difficulty. No, he was like, looking at you because your eyes crossed. <laughs> he was like, what's going on with her face? Well, when I said I'll have the burrito with chorizo and queso, y queso, por favor. I think it's worse to do bad Spanish than it is to say the word wrong. Like, I think that's more socially unacceptable. It's weird we do that, isn't it? When Why we, someone says Italian words. And... I'm not fighting with you. I'm talking about the concept of one being worse than the other. Okay. When English people put on an accent to say, like, I'll have a pasta. You know what I mean? Have you yes. heard that? I do that. I do that on purpose for German words. Okay. Well, give us an example. Someone will be like, oh, you're in Berlin. Where'd you go? Or like, where'd you stay? And I'll be like, oh, I was in Kreuzberg. No, Instead nice. of just saying Kreuzberg. Yeah. And then they're just yeah. sort of like, oh, oh, cool. And then they'll be like, oh, where's that now? And I'm like, oh, like, Zwischen, no- sorry, between Neukölln and... <laughs> do you think so they do it impressed. for English people? Like they, They're not impressed. Italians don't go, I have a full English breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I 
really fucking hope they do. <laughs> I've never seen it done. No, no, I have never, never seen that. I've never been to like, if you ever go to like Italy or Spain, there's never like a cafe in an English, like, speak. there's never just some random cockneys like in the English, middle. Like English, but no one goes to an English restaurant. No. Like, they you don't. know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> like, no, they'll go to an English pub. Yeah. That's it. English because pub. They, there we go. People... But they're not, they're not eating there. They're just drinking. Well, maybe like shepherd's pie or just a sausage. But I've seen, I mean, I haven't, eaten in an english bar or an irish bar in america but i've seen gordon ramsay's kitchen nightmares i don't think they know what shepherd's pie is there it's no not, they're having a terrible time cooking over there yeah, yeah honestly yeah. everyone's food's great in america i don't think it is i've seen six seasons of it mm. having a horrible time <laughs> they're not really doing very well i think english cuisine is actually overlooked and there's a real like sort of it's not it Red, what are you talking about it's disgusting no there's no better meal than a sunday roast and there's no better there breakfast is, than a full is. english the breakfast it's called just thai fine. food or indian yeah. food every <laughs> The other kind of food is the better than The roast isn't that good. It's, it's just putting so everything good. in the oven and cooking it the same way it in oil. So it's, 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 the only thing you've had that that reaches like close to delicious is gravy. Like fish and chips. Like, fish and radish. chips is the Amazing. Closest. And even then, it is just dodge. Well, I think I, I, I expect backlash from the uh, people who listen and watch this podcast. No, I think we're in the right English food. Like a crisp sandwich is probably the best it gets. Are you fucking. This is horrible. A roast is just average. I mean, so what do you think Princess Diana did on Sundays? Ate a pad thai? Ate and then threw it up. Everything. <laughs> it didn't really matter. It, when you believe it, it doesn't really matter what's going in because it's coming out anyway. <laughs> if anything, if pad thai, probably, yeah, that'd probably come up nice and easy, you know? If you had a baby, even if it was a boy, would you call it Diana? Ideally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my boy, Diana. Princess Diana Bauer. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be quite funny, actually. I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> okay. I think that's actually a gorgeous name for a little boy. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm just looking at you because I just need a minute for him. I okay. get that. I get Who that. thinks the Sunday roast is the best meal? It's, it's, it's insane. In, no, it's incredible. Jody, can you jump in? You like Sunday roast? I like Sunday roast. I wouldn't say they're the best meal ever. Oh. But like, I never crave it, you know? Do you have no pride in this place? I don't, you no, know, I, I hate it. You watch I Ukraine. It. I watch the Ukrainian people and they feel, they're feel they just so proud and they're brave and amazing. This country would fucking sell out to Putin in seconds. And that's why Red voted for Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> that, I didn't why vote. people think you're a cunt, Red, because you say stuff like this. Well, no, I'm just saying, look, you've got to have some sort of this is a good Red meal. D- there's other things he says that make people think he's a cunt. It's not just things like <laughs> it's that. It's this laugh. It is this laugh. I fucking love it. But it sounds wrong. Why? I don't know. You sound like like you're like scheming. Yeah. Like, like a, you know that cartoon? Every cartoon that kids watch has one character who's like an adult in the cartoon world but hangs out with the kids. <laughs> and like, what always, cartoons are these? Like, like Big Ears and Noddy. Yeah. Like he was an adult but Noddy was a little boy. Mm-hmm. Or like Okie Doke, the Oakley. I've not seen any of this. I, no, I do no. have a feeling if Red hadn't moved to London, like if you stayed in Devon, when you were like 30, you would be hanging out with 18 year olds. And just like, where are we going to party this weekend, guys? And like, oh, we already partied, actually. We're just going to stay at home. Like like Brian Adams, I'm, I'm 18 till I die. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you now, though? Uh, we're just sort yeah, of like, getting on. You know, 18 till you're 40. <laughs> Well, how about you open up the first English restaurant and call it Diana's? Yeah, we could do that. And it'd be no, like. No, not we. I don't want to. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it'd be, it'd 24 be... hour diner. Everyone gets their own toilet next to their seat. So, so it they could be a 24 hour diner and pen- petrol stations, giant toilet. You can piss where you want. If, if I open Diana's. I, it would be an English and Middle Eastern fusion restaurant <laughs> to Dodi. celebrate the love of Dodi Al Fayed and Diana. Ah, that's you get quite it. Nice. This is what I love about you. You understand, you know, like something that you don't understand. What? So when you open Diana's restaurant, you're just like a big toilet, and then just watch shepherd's pie and roast. Twenty four hour roast, non stop. You can get a roast at six a.m. <laughs> <laughs> this place sounds fucking horrible. You six a.m. roast, and you sit on a toilet to eat, so you don't have to get up to piss. Okay. We're just having a moment of silence for good ideas. <laughs> Did you know in 97? Oh my God, this is what I was waiting for. I was like, when are they going to fucking tell me something about 97? I don't Ky- know. Kylie Jenner was born. Great. Is she the reincarnation of Princess Diana? No. Okay, why What not? sort of a fucking question is that? She's like Diana, but she gives everything to herself as opposed to the people. She helped people as well. Who she helped? Young girls who don't like their lips. 
Yeah, no, fair yeah. She fair she tells them how to get new lips. <laughs> no, they can buy a lip kit and get close. Get close to being kind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I mean, but the Kylie's... reason they don't like their lips is because she has mm. lips that aren't attainable. So they mm. see her lips and think those lips look great. And Say then what like, you want My about Kylie. Her surgery is good. Wait, she's had plastic surgery. So much, but it's <laughs> such <laughs> good surgery. I thought... She looks fit, no? Have you seen what she looked like like five years ago? Compared yeah, of to course. Now? I was it, watching you know, the Kardashians. Her mum just must not recognise. Like what? I Who's know this? it is mad, isn't it? Like it's a completely new face. Mm, but they're, all her sisters have had it, and they're all so fit. Like I think she's mm. had loads of pressure on her. Of course she has. And also, she's a baby, ninety-seven. Yeah, what's that? How old is that? Twenty-four. Mm, Twenty-five this year. She's tiny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billy now. I know. She's, yeah, off, I'm not, I don't worry about her. No. But what it. else happened in 97? Oh, there's a lot. There is a lot. They've literally done no research. No, we got, we got documents. Don't you worry about that. I, I came here to learn. In 1997, the DVD format <gasps> was launched. No. Da -da -da. I thought it was later. No, no. 97. Love this podcast. See? Next fact. Next fact. No, no, we're going to No, no, no. I just want to I just want to be like bombarded with facts. Okay, go on, give her another one. Yay! Let's, let's, she loves the facts. Um, in 97 in San Diego, 39 Heaven's Gate cultists committed mass suicide at their compound. Can I hear more about that one, please. Okay. Here's the thing. I think I'd be a great cult leader. You so yeah, 100%. would. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So I think would. you would be a great number two for me, Helen. No, I don't know why everyone always thinks I'm number two. I've had this been told to me like my entire life. Like you couldn't be the leader, but you could be like an enforcer, like the meat. Like I, would be the <laughs> no, I never used the word the meat. the meat. No, that's what it is. It's like you'd be the brains, and I'd be like, you better fucking drink the Kool Aid. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to be like because I went to a cult. Did you? And joined for two days. Did so you? I, yeah. What cult? Um, it's an ashram in Kerala. Really? Anna's ashram, yeah. So what did you do? Did you have to sleep with the cult Wait, master? First yeah. of all, did you know it was a cult before you joined? I was a young 19-year-old white girl. Yeah. And I wanted to go to an ashram. <laughs> I was curious. I was in India. I've been there for two and a half months. I was by myself. Do not recommend traveling as a teenager by yourself. No fucking India, by the way. way. Like, I that's feel like something you got I've a lot now, of attention. I've yeah. now learned. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, my dad was like, oh yeah, you just need a fiver and a knife and you'll be fine. It was fiver terrible advice. <laughs> 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 he said you can travel the world as long as you've got a fiver and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've now learned is not true. No. One, the currency doesn't do anything over there. <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> but like, um, so I went to this ashram and I thought it was just going to be like an interesting thing to be at. I was just curious. And um, it was fucking mad. Like, so you shared rooms with people. So obviously I was in like the intake rooms. There was like people who were just there for like a little bit. But I met this other woman there and she was sharing a room with a woman who'd like left her whole family in America. Like so many people would leave the whole family, give all their money they had and then just never return. Because they were like, oh, I really love the lifestyle here. This is really important. But it was just a massive money making scheme. Of course, they all are. But they sort of take your passport and they photocopy it when you arrive. And they're like, oh, come get it in three days. But then me and this other woman were like, we need to fucking get out of here. But there's only a bus once a week. <laughs> oh. And I had no money, so I had to wait for the bus. But luckily this woman, it turns out, like her family invented the sugar coating around tablets so they don't <laughs> taste. Like really rich German woman. And she was like, no, no, I'll take you in a car. I'll take you in a car. I'm going to go to this five-star resort. And I went, oh, I can't go. And she was like, no, 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 come with me. You can stay with me as long as we share a bed. <laughs> so you went from a cult to being forced into a bed. So we got a car at like five in the morning, <laughs> grabbed our passports, left, and then we shared a bed in this villa for a week and she paid for everything. What? And at the end of it, she took me out for this dinner, like out of the resort, gave me $100 and she'd never touched me. How Brilliant. weird is that? Yeah, that's, that's really what a friendly odd. lady. Nice was, lady. Was so nice. That's really so nice. nice. But I have to say it. Out loud to believe it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that basically, I was in the cult, and I didn't actually thrive in the environment. But why did you think it was a cult? What, what, what were the things that made you think it was a cult? So you had to hand over all your stuff. If you were to stay there, they were like, "It's free. It's free to be here." But you had to hand over all your money, and you had to adhere to their rules, their times of eating, and as far as like outside contact went, you were very cut off. And that's the famous thing in cults: they slowly cut you off from the people that you know and you love. Blah blah blah. Like. To get internet, you'd have to like walk into the village to go to this cafe to use the internet. But then if you were a certain stage of it, you wouldn't leave the village. Mm. So it's like, oh, so they are just 
Yeah, they're just taking... So they had that whole, like, no, no, it's cool, you can come and go when you want, but it's like, it's not... uh, They always end in mass suicide as well. It's weird, isn't it? Also, the leader of this, the guru, she was, like, really nice because she hugged everyone. I don't trust that. No. I don't trust that. It's always, the cults often start with good intent, like, was it Jim Jones, the Jonestown guy? And he was... Good intention? Well, he when he started in the 60s, his whole thing was the way America treats black people is a disgrace. Um, he was like, you know, hugely okay. trying to, you know, preaching about equality, stuff like that. And everyone's like, oh, this is a great guy, you know, great movement. And then he's like, right, I have to fuck all the children so they prove that they're loyal. But then it's not good because it's the, the idea that starts before the cult is a nice idea. Mm. Wait, did, I, did he fuck children? No, but I think he, like, insisted on sleeping Red, with everyone. I don't know if we can... We can't just have you... Making what? things up about Jim Jones. No, I don't right, want to disperse his good name. Yeah. He's not a pedophile, he's a hebophile. Well, he, he's, yes. dead, he's dead now. <laughs> he was a heb, not a ped. <laughs> he's, 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 he's sadly departed. Um, In 97? No. Oh, no, thank was God. Like also, or Helen, I need to get your input on one thing before I tell you all about Heaven's Gate. Okay, Red, you know, he's opening for me on tour. Yeah. He, you know, some people like Red, but then they think, I follow Red on Twitter or Instagram, what do I call myself? Redophiles. He wants me to call my fan base redophiles. A lot of them are already pedophiles, so it's actually just a change oh, yeah, of one no, letter. It's a great, it's easy. I just, I'm a fan of yours, and I don't want to be a redophile. No, but you are, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> like pedophiles, redophiles don't get to decide no. if they are one. Do we get you, you can't help who you like. Like Do Diana, she didn't want to be a royal, you didn't want to be a redophile, she but didn't. unfortunately, you okay, get much. Right. I'm a redophile, what's, what's the match? Um, I'll make a mug that just says I'm a red. Oh, I love mugs. Okay, great, great. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. I'll use that. Sorted. Great. Okay. I want to hear more about Heaven's Gate. I'm yeah, sorry. let's, let's I'm get into okay. it. The two founders met at a psychiatric hospital in the early <laughs> 1970s. <laughs> Applewhite was a patient, and Nettles worked at the hospital. <laughs> I think a patient too. They founded the group and started looking for followers after creating a religious doctrine together. <laughs> I'm so into this. Yeah. This is great. Wait, um, the one who wasn't a patient sounds very Shutter Island. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, I've never seen the film. Well, he thinks he's a, investigating, but it's like, no, he investigating mental hospital. But it's like, no, you you, you are a no part way. of this. Yeah. You just spoiler? ruined Shutter Island. Oh! It's, it's been out for years. Oh my God. I had it rented to watch tonight. Well, I Dumb, Dumbledore dies. Yeah. Six Me Sense, he's dead. Was... He's dead in Six Sense. I knew that. I yeah. knew that. And um, I knew it before I ever watched it. But I didn't tell someone that's so where we John watched Snow the kills first Khaleesi time. in Game of Thrones. If you're watching that, all of them. Fuck Red, you. Stop it. <laughs> Red. Putin gets stabbed in the back by his closest advisor. That's, that's Caesar. That's Caesar. Oh yeah, Caesar. Sorry, I get them muddled up. Carry on. The next. Uh, what, what else? Heaven's <laughs> Gate believed that there was a place called the evolutionary level above human, a physical place where they could go if they shed all attachments to the human world. Oh, I've Facts. been there. I've been For there. Real truth. For a while, this meant giving up sex, belongings, individual interests, and all relationships with family and friends. But eventually, (laughs) they came to believe that they also needed to give up their human bodies, (laughs) which they referred to as vehicles. Okay. (laughs) So they were like... It's the vehicle for your soul. That's a very famous religious thing. Yeah, but you can't go anywhere without the vehicle, can you? I think they find out quite (laughs) Yeah, you, you you need the skin. Yeah, Yeah. ideally. Um, Yeah, Heaven's Gate was the most like least fun cult to be in i've ever read about yeah so since the group wasn't allowed to have sex that was a rule some group members were voluntarily castrated to control their sexual urges Ooh. that's very game so of thrones chop thing. it off so they were like why have a cult if there's not a leader that gets to fuck everyone yeah yeah that's pointless I mean, it's true. You see it all the time. So the the Tiger King, Doc Antle, and that stuff. It's yeah, just so yeah, yeah. He, he's easily a cult leader. Wait, so they were doing? They wanted to have sex with them, but then they'd castrate them. Yeah, they go. No, no, nobody was allowed to have sex in this cult ever. And they, no one ever to no. con- to control the urge. Someone would go, guys, I've got a boner. Yeah, unfortunate, but get rid of it. Oh my god! I like the idea that well, the guy's working at the at the place or whoever you know the lady it, it just suddenly meets a patient that they that they click with at the psychiatric. Do you know, do, was no one watching her going? She's really fucking. 
Like they're making a religious, she's making religious doctrine with a patient. But I think it's the same with everything. Like at first you're just sort of like, oh, bless them. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Yeah. And then yeah. It's, it's only when it gets out of control, you go, I knew. I should yeah, have said something. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. the same with this podcast. I support it at the moment. Yeah. And then but when this takes weird. over, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to ditch so yeah. quickly. Redophiles, if I see any of you with a boner, <laughs> go get rid of that. Wait, so then they all, how did they all die? Well, was it a mass castration <laughs> gone wrong? The problem was in 1997, the Haley Bop comment was passing by Earth. I've heard about it that. It was the brightest comment ever to be observed in the 20th century, visible with the naked eye for 18 months. Um, 18 months. An amateur astronomer in Texas claimed he had observed something following the comet. This was their death, the death nail in their coffin, which he deduced to be a UFO. Heaven's Gate believed the claim. Believe the UFO following Hale Bop was the gateway to the next level. Oh. And then they went for the next well, level. Maybe they're all but there they, they all having a great themselves? time. But probably drank something. It's used to the way, isn't the, it? The Kool Aid thing, yeah. It's cheaper. Wasn't that Jonestown? Just Jonestown, yeah, but it's cheaper, isn't it? If you want to get bullets for it, it's quite expensive. It's like, oh, is it? But is then that you're dead, so who cares? You know, blow, right? blow all your savings on Unless they want to leave loads of money to charity. Maybe cults want to leave money to charity. I don't think they do. I think they take it. Bobby now to... Googling how they died. I think they take it to Heaven's Gate. So they, <laughs> they saw a flying cock and thought that's our sign to go. But then surely, like, you'd wait and see if the aliens had anything to say before you went? Mm. What, like, what, you check it out first to make sure it's I, right? Well, I would like to meet an alien before I died if I had the opportunity. That's definitely on my bucket list. You want to meet an alien? Yeah, or mm. just have a little chat with them, you know? Mm. It doesn't have to be, like, a drinks night, like, just no. a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> to kill themselves, members <laughs> don't... <laughs> Fino barbital mixed with applesauce or pudding and wash it down with vodka. Oh, well, that's quite pleasant. Additionally, yeah, they secured plastic bags around their heads after ingesting the mix to make, induce asphyxiation. All 39 were dressed in identical black shirts and sweatpants, brand new black and white Nike Decades athletic shoes, what? and armband <laughs> patches reading Heaven's Gate Away Team. They had a sense of humour. That is so <laughs> fucked up. They were all wearing matching. Did they all just go for a group purchase at the <laughs> Nike store? Yeah. Which what? doesn't help when you're feeling suicidal with a sign saying, just do it that big. <laughs> like, fuck. One of the many instances that the group's use of the nomenclature of the fictional universe of Star Trek. They loved Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Each member had on their person a $5 bill and three quarters in their pocket. Uh, that, as that's it, like your dad said, all you need is a five. Five or a knife. Yeah, yeah. instead of three quarters, a knife. <laughs> According to the former members, this was standard for members leaving the home for jobs and a humorous way to tell us that they had left the planet permanently. They were funny. They were funny guys. <laughs> <laughs> the five dollar bill was for covering the cost of vagrancy laws, and the quarters were for calling home for, from payphones. Once a member was dead, a living member would arrange the body by removing the plastic bag from the person's head, followed by posing the body so it lay neatly in its own bed with faces and torsos covered by a square purple cloth for privacy. What? In an interview with Harry Robinson, the two surviving members said that the identical clothing was used as a uniform for the mass suicide to represent unity, while the Nike decades were chosen because their group got a good deal on the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrendous! Wait, can I just clarify something? I thought they were all wearing black jumpers and black sweatpants, but then they had purple cloths put over them for modesty. Over yeah. their faces, I think. Over the just the faces. Okay, so then the two. So there was two people who were like, "We won't kill ourselves. We'll deal with the bodies." I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> Apple White was also a fan of Nikes, and therefore everyone is expected to wear it and like Nikes within the group. I wear Adidas. <laughs> Uh, I wear well, Adidas. You would not have been allowed you to kill been, yourself Apple with these White people. Would have been very... I mean, I would put them on for death because I don't think I'm walking anywhere, am I? It's just like size wise, yeah. Adidas do a ladies wide fit. <laughs> 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 Carry on. Heaven's Gate also had a saying within the group. Just do it. Using Nike slogan. See? I literally said that. <laughs> they pronounce do as doe to reflect Apple White's nickname. <laughs> just, just do, do it, it. <laughs> it sounds, actually it sounds like, quite fun actually. you would fucking love hanging out with them <laughs> the 39 adherents 21 women and 18 men b 
between the ages of 26 and 72 are believed to have died in three groups over three successive days, with remaining participants cleaning up after each prior group's deaths. I gotta say, <sighs> if I was on the third day, after watching all no. my fellow friends die, I, th I think I'd be like, I'm just gonna like go for a walk <laughs> uh, to the store. But that, right by that back. point, you'll just be arrested and given the death penalty because you've assisted all these kill like deaths. Like, there's no way out of it by that point. I would want to be day one. I would not want to be day any. No, I, day I one, day be, one. I would definitely be like, guys, this is crazy. Hey, you guys, I'll get the Kool-Aid for you. You do it. I'll just be here. Can you imagine all the creeps who wanted to be day three? And they'd just be like, he said he got castrated. He fucking lied. <laughs> <laughs> I can check it, everyone. Like, absolute creep. No, day one, get out of there. That's what I'd say. What would you be? Day two, probably. Yeah. Want to no, please everyone. Like, You're like, I'm happy to help out, but I don't yeah. want to do the full shift. Yeah. <laughs> the suicides occurred in groups of 15, 15, and 9 between approximately March 22nd and 26th. <gasps> That's my birthday. This happened over my birthday. My birthday You're March really 25th. connected to 1997 in ways you didn't even know, Helen. Holy shit. Diana wasn't even dead yet. This means that she had to le learn about this yep. before she died. <laughs> What was she wearing when she died? Dress. <laughs> <laughs> Among the dead was Thomas Nichols, brother of actress Nikkel Nichols, who is best known for her role as Uhura in the original television series of Star Trek. Mm, I, don't, I never watched it. I'm sorry. Is it Live Long and Prosper? Is that Star Trek? Might be. That's I'm a Vulcan a saying in Star Trek. I'm a big fan. That is, yes. Mr. Spock mm. is half Vulcan, half human. You're the opposite of a Vulcan. There are people with no emotions, Helen. <laughs> I Too many emotions. <laughs> That's what the tarot card reader said yesterday to me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Too emotional. <laughs> Leader Applewhite was the third to last member to die. Two people remained after him and were the only ones who would be found with bags over their heads and not having purple cloths covering their top halves. Before the last of the suicides, similar sets of packages were sent to numerous Heaven's Gate affiliate affiliated individuals and at least one media outlet the bbc department responsible for louis throw's weird weekends for which heaven's gate had earlier declined participation Ooh. what the fuck i would have just <clears throat> waited to go last and then not not drank the kool-aid and then taken everyone's shoes and sold them gone but on holiday you you'd be com is it complicit what's the word like you'd yeah, be I suppose part of you'd it. Go to prison, wouldn't you? Cuz you you've been part of this mass killing. Yeah, or could you not just say I was going to commit suicide and then I turn No, I think assisting suicide is illegal in America. Yeah. I think you have to do here. it very carefully. Okay. Among those in the list of recipients was Rio D'Angelo. The package D'Angelo received on the evening of March 25th as My other birthday! packages sent had contained two VHS videotapes. One with Dew's final exit, and the other with the farewell, farewell messages of group followers. It also contained a letter stating that, among other things, we have exited our vehicles just as we entered them. Upon informing his boss of the contents of the packages, D'Angelo received a ride from L.A. to the Heaven's Gate home in Rancho Santa Fe so he could verify the letter. D'Angelo found a back door intentionally left unlocked to allow access and used a video camera to record what he found. After leaving the house, D'Angelo's boss, who had waited outside, encouraged him to make calls to authorities, alerting them to his discovery. <laughs> the idea you have to encourage someone when they find 40 dead people, like, I think you should maybe call yeah. the police. Oh my God. This is, this is harrowing. Mm -hmm. And also over my sixth birthday. Yeah. No respect. Or fifth, I can't remember now. Yeah. Not nice at all. It's awful. So another thing in 97, though, uh, this is good. Bill Clinton made it illegal to clone. So you can no longer clone. Well, not that anyone did it before, but he said, no, this is, we don't want this. Preemptively. He pre yeah. Before they cloned a human, he was like, you're not allowed to clone yeah. people. So he said no. Which I think is weird because he could have used That's a clone. such a weird law to pass. When he got the blowjob, he could have said, ah, it was my naughty clone who's just got sex on the brain all the time. <laughs> they cloned what? him wrong. Here's what Red just did. Here's what Red just did. He took the topic that was covered the most in comedy ever yeah. 25 yep. years ago. Yep. And he wrote 
a he late night TV it. joke. <laughs> well, I was just riffing on it. What, what's wrong? And with he it? was like, "I'm ready. I know what I'm gonna say here. I've got to say this, Bobby. I'm I've got to say it on pod. <laughs> I'm ready." Yeah. Okay, I won't do jokes on the comedy podcast anymore. Sorry. <laughs> also, we're, we're we're doing a subject that was twenty five years ago. So he gets so defensive. Why are you getting so upset? Why you're literally freaking? Open your Fanta. You it's, opened it's open. it. Okay, have a sip. Take a minute. I thought the Monica Lewinsky reference was very funny. Thank you very much. Bobby did as well. But then uh, I was called a hack. On my own. It was pod. a bit hacky. Oh my god! I heard a new phrase. By the way, I heard a new phrase in Germany. And they're like, so like they're like, there's not like a big industry for comedy. So it's like, you're either a headliner or you're not. Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of like, is it what it comes down to? So they go like, oh, they're a headliner. So there's like loads of new people there who I haven't seen because I haven't been back since 2019. And I was like, oh, how are they doing? They're like, oh, yeah, no, she had, well, she hack lines. And I'm like, what's hack lining? Ooh. So hack lining is when you headline, but only with hack stuff. Okay. I had <clears throat> never heard that before. Have you heard that? Never. I love it so much. It's very, it's, and it's very true. You're hack lining. S- you, we know lots of people at Hackline. Do you? Yeah. Oh man, I need to fit, like tell me after this. Tell me after this. I want to know who the Hackliners are here. So know who the Hackliners are there. You know, my grandparents are so racist. Which camp do they work in? You know, oh. like but oh, is that oh, a big German oh. joke? I think that's, that's just that's around the world, isn't it? Yeah. My grandparents are racist. Just in Germany, it's better. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very differently. Um. Very lovely reference to cloning. Thank you. We'll leave that now. The blowjob. Um, I know. Any... I want to know quickly though. How close were they to cloning when this? I don't actually came know. In? He just said, "Look, this is getting too close." So well, they AI... cloned the sheep. They had cloned that sheep. Okay, yeah, but like, and then they were like, "Oh, better." But why don't they want clones? I think they don't want clones because overpopulation. It might be no. It might be too good because they could make you know everything that makes us unique. They could get rid of that and make better people. Ooh. But why wouldn't they want that? I would. I. I think we should all die and get better versions of ourselves. It'd be good no? to have a clone that goes and does like your admin and stuff. But you then you have, have a slave. Like... That's a slave, right? Yeah, but it's a clone. Which... And you, not to come across as a crazy conspiracy theorist, but you don't think there's any link between the fact Diana died and he was like, "Don't clone that because she knows too much." Ah, oh, okay. Because that'll be the end it. of the royal family, and there's already pictures of the Clintons hanging out with the royal family. And then if she comes back, she can say exactly what happened. <laughs> and you don't think there's a link there. I would worry about having a clone because if I had a clone and then I, I got them to do all the menial chores around the house, Harriet would fall in love with that clone. She would be like, I love this version of Bobby that just does what needs to be done. <laughs> well, I just sat on the couch lazy and I was like, yeah, pick up my fucking dirty pants, clone. What, what about Harriet's clone, though? I think you'd like Harriet's clone. I would totally have an affair with both clones. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet. But Harriet would say, you can't fuck my clone. I'm like, it's you. It's you. I'd like a clone just so I could see what I look like from the side and the behind. Well, that's a, a camera phone. You know that thing that of like, you can you. never, no, but you know that thing <laughs> of like, you can never see your face. Not properly. I, yeah, I get that. Like you can see your hands, but you can never see your face. It's always like either well, a reflection where mirror. you can see a bit of it because your eyes will like distort it. Or you can like, yeah, but like a mirror, but it's not the same. Like you, I, I've seen more of your face than you ever have. I look in the mirror a lot. No, for hours. like you can never see the back of your head. That's true, unless someone takes a picture. And that of it. blows my mind. Have you never had a photo taken in the back of your head? I mean, sure, but like I would like to see what I look like all around. Mm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is this. Okay, fine. You know what? Forget it. But would I would you... like to have a clone to try out hairstyles on and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can but would you be your clone's best? Would you be your own best friend, or would me you? Me and my clone would have a great time together. Are you kidding? All There's the so many interests. things I want to do, but I don't want to go by myself. Like what? But I can't. Disneyland Florida is the main one. Like I can't find a friend who's willing to put down the thick end of like five grand on it. <laughs> and I'm not going by myself because I'm just in the single rider line the whole time, which doesn't sound like that much fun. So then it's like that Shrek adventure, no one wants to go with me. So like me and my clone would go together and like they take photos, I take photos of them. Like we'd have a great time. Okay. Red, what would you do with if you had a clone? Um <laughs> make out with it. <laughs> <laughs> Public 
<laughs> at a bus stop, everyone goes, I saw Red kissing Red earlier. It was fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have seen that before. Two people making out who look exactly the same, and it's fucking crazy. What, twins? No, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that too. We've all seen that, Helen. We've all seen the movies. Hot. Just two people hot. who look that exactly the same making out, and I couldn't figure out whose back of the head it was, and it was like, what the fuck is happening? The, it was we- really the Weasley weird. boys made a sex tape. <laughs> so, sometimes in porn, they're like, these girls are twins, but they're just not twins. You're like, these are not twins. Those are two girls that kind to look the same they're different ages <laughs> and different heights i just don't think you would make out with your clone why not i just don't think you, you don't would even be like... sexually attracted to your clone i think yeah, i think are you would. attracted to yourself yes really yeah, 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 yeah i yeah. think that's a good thing isn't it you yeah. should find yourself attractive you just go oh who's that oh it's me because <laughs> i i automatically don't respect someone that finds me attractive so why I that's because it's just disrespectful isn't it that's just... what the vibe i'm getting Right, <laughs> that's why Helen doesn't respect me because her, I can't. I can't deny her fierce sexual energy. I can't. I'm just like I've got, I don't like it. Yes, right? well, I'm just accepting a fierce sexual energy that is undeniable, Helen. And if you can't accept that, I don't want your respect. If this was is, if this is what not getting your respect feels like, I like it. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I have fucking no respect for either of you. How about okay. That? All right. Can I have another fact, please? Yes, this is uh, very you, actually, Helen. Mm. So I'm going to move this closer. Is it, if I'm it's going to be about a Furby or a Tamagotchi, isn't it? Oh, close. <laughs> An episode of Pokemon, <gasps> it was called Electric Soldier Porygon, featured a scene with flashing lights which induced mass seizures in children across Japan. <laughs> A subsequent news report replayed that the offense. That is very me. In all fairness, that is so up my street. Okay, this is even better. A subsequent news report replayed the offending scene and prompted more seizures. Are you <laughs> that is awful. Unbelievable. Which episode? Porygon. It's called Electric Soldier. I've got a Porygon. Porygon. Really? Yeah. And you're a big Pokemon person. It's it's an evolution of a Poliwell. Yeah. I don't know what any of these are. No, a Porygon. Oh my God. Forgive me. It's a normal type Pokemon. It's like a little flying bird thing that's mechanical. Okay. Forgiven. Yeah, do you want to yeah. see? Um, I'll show you after. Show I'll show you after. after. I'll show, show you after. after. You're you a get po- a Porygon Z-, Z type as well. You're a Pokemon nutter, aren't you? I'm not a nutter, <laughs> but I'm a legacy player, if that's what you mean. What does that mean? It means that, like, you know, I hit level 40 before the 31st of December 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, it means that I have. A Gyarados hat, which I can wear in the app, which you can't now access if you haven't had it before then. Okay. I have all 151 in the Kanto region. I've got over 700 different species of Pokemon that I've caught over the years. I've got over 200 friends and uh, I do raids in Hiroshima. I did one on the bus today on the way here. So you're a Pokemon slave owner. <laughs> yeah, basically. You just own all these Pokemon. I feed them daily. And you're doing raids on Hiroshima. Have they not had enough? I raid in Hiroshima. <laughs> they've, had, they've had a hard enough time yeah. without you stealing all their Pokemon, <laughs> Helen. Why? What happened? <laughs> I, 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 mean, I don't what know. What happened? There was a food poisoning epidemic. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, dear. That sounds bad. Yeah, it wasn't good. Udon. Was it? Yeah, a lot yeah. of diarrhea. Udon Udon was, it. it was like a diarrhea weekend. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing with Japanese food. When you get just the wasabi coming out the other end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. bloody hell. <laughs> You're right, they have had enough. <laughs> and then and I, they had an atomic bomb, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That was it. Then they were bombed. It was a bomb, like a big bomb, but it was like one of the mushroom cloud ones, right? Yes. Who did that? Who dropped that bomb? America. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, why? Um, I don't know, actually. Uh, there was a thing called the Second World War. Oh, was it yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, and it was like uh, a big fight that happened. I thought it was like later on in the sixties or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. But why did they? Why did they drop it on? Oh, uh, the Japanese. Uh, they could attack Pearl Harbor. I went to a Japanese mm. prisoner of war. Ben Affleck camp, nearly, nearly died. Very sad. Did you? No, I've seen Pearl Harbor. Yeah. There's a guy. Do you know the Saint Trinians? What? Yeah. Yeah. Gemma Arterton. Yes. Yeah. Well, a famous show. Anyway, the man who wrote that wrote it in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. And it's like this really like sort of, you know, it's from private girls school. Sort private of stuff. girls school. So he's just sat there being beaten with cricket bats and just writing this sort of like Seriously, Japanese prisoner of war camp. They had a mm. tough time there, Bobby. I don't mind telling you that for nothing. No. Yeah. I went to one. I went to Shangi prison in Singapore. Mm. Don't recommend. Actually, no, they were good. Like we went on a family holiday and there's like an experience where you can sit in the room and they give you the experience of being a Japanese prisoner of war. What? <laughs> but they turn all the lights off and just scream at you in Japanese. And I was like eight and I cried. Yeah, that doesn't seem like... Why something. would they... You know what, how is that a fun weekend for an eight-year-old? <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, do you want to go see... My parents didn't really understand, like... 
they thought our oh, museums are good for our kids because we weren't very bright and i think they were like hoping one of us would like do better than my dad you know just like in life so they would take us to a lot of museums and historical sites of interest and now you can't sit without the tv on <laughs> otherwise you <laughs> hear otherwise voices you fucking remember shaggy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm a pokemon player but that's good to know so loads of seizures yeah. Poor little kiddies. This is another one for you, Helen. Okay. <laughs> is it is it seizing season kids again? Because that's not no, really no, very no, nice. No, 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 no. Okay. Mattel released a share Barbie. of sm- yep, share yeah. a smile Becky, Barbie doll, who was disabled and came with a wheelchair. However, the doll created controversy when it was pointed out that Barbie Dreamhouse was not wheelchair accessible. Oh no! Couldn't accommodate Becky's needs. So yep. Becky was just parked out in the garden. No! Even, even in the rain, so she's just there sad, can't get in the house, pissing it down, died of pneumonia. Well, I think that opened up a conversation for children, though, to be like, oh, yeah, you have we to be accessible. We have disabled friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, if, if you have disabled friends who won't be able to get in the house, they'll feel bad, and the thing you have to do is just not get them. When you meet other disabled, <laughs> when you meet disabled children, don't be nice to them, or else they'll want to come over and realize our house has a lot of stairs. <laughs> it is, it so. is that message because it's so easy to build a plastic ramp. That's the thing, and also like and they went nah, they're <laughs> ugly. I would rather you have no disabled friends than have to have an I ugly love ramp. ramps. Do you not like ramps? I like ramps because I uh, they're easier than stairs. I prefer when a ramp I have to the a choice stair. between ramp and stair. I always go ramp. And it's too. fun as well. You can run down it, run up. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Like the ramps at airports are so great because you can just let go of your suitcase and you sort of like gotta like beat it to the end before it hits someone. <laughs> you know, I like I like the flat. Red hates them. I like I love the flat <gasps> escalator. travelators. Travelators, like them. Why? but you're What's a lazy you? man. How is it that every other again? We but how is it that in every other aspect of your life you're lazy, but then in this aspect you want to walk when it could get you there faster than walking between really. the Jubilee and Northern Line at Waterloo. Waterloo that's one of the best that. travelators. The I like them going up and down, but just. Flat, but you're you know, sort yeah. of like every you're constantly go. It feels like you're in a movie. Why? Because you're just like like a bionic woman, okay. like Robocop, yeah, yeah, you, you know, and you're that. like walking, but you're still going even in the stop. It's insane. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. But that's really good. I'm glad Mattel did that. I had, well, no, they I didn't had a do doll that. in a they, wheelchair when I was little. They made a Barbie doll that's in a wheelchair that can't get in the house. It's a step in the right direction. What? Saying this, just keep them out in the cold. Oh, that's a shame. But also, Barbie lives in like Malibu or something, so it wouldn't have been cold. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Red, actually, she's just hanging out outside like a lot of other people in Malibu. Yeah, yeah she's on the beach. It's fine. And also, like, now I'm sure the Barbie Dream House comes with, I don't know, this is very triggering for me because I never got a Barbie Dream House and I always wanted one. Why didn't you get one? I don't know. I circled it in the Argos catalogue every year. And it just never. I didn't get one. <laughs> it never came. Uh-uh. <laughs> and my hopes, but I was always too ambitious when it came but to But you Christmas. could get your one. You, would you do it for yourself now? Yeah, I don't know. Sunil's like really funny about like he won't let me have the Furby in the living room. Like, like he's I, a bit I, funny about the toys being around. Like I love golf and I always wanted really good golf clubs as a kid, but yeah. I couldn't afford them. And now as an adult, I bought some good golf clubs and you feel like I finally achieved my childhood ambition. That's, that's what I'm doing by like going to like Disneyland and stuff like that. Like when I went to Disneyland Paris, I was like, oh, I'm giving myself the childhood I always deserved. You know, I'm sorry. I just played with the mic and Jody yelled at me. Yeah, he clicked. And sorry, did listener, like a but Hitler he actually salute. screamed in my face. Yeah. <laughs> did you see that? He's He gets violent. He actually, I don't know what to do with my hand. He attacked a guest the before. We had a guest on and he hit them. Did you? No, Jody would never hit a guest. <laughs> Yet. As we know of. Yet. All right, well, I think that's a perfect place to wrap up, actually. What, disabled Barbie left outside. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and Jody's uh, attack on you. You've touched the microphone. You've let us know. I've touched it several times, haven't I? I'm a real fiddler. Yeah. I feel like when I go on podcasts, I should be given something to do. Yeah, like... Speak. That's We've already <laughs> given you one thing. The speaking is the thing. Can I touch this? No, that's the camera. Hello. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> you just ruined it. Okay, well, thank Helen. you so much for having me. I've had the best time of my life. What do you? What have you got to sell? What do you want to shift to our listeners? My own personality. Okay. No, no, I've got a podcast. It's called Trusty Hogs. Yeah, with yeah. Catherine Bohart. With Catherine Bohart and Bobby's been on it. Bobby's been Red on it. Red. I've never been not on, been on it. No, no, your no. energy isn't right for it, Red. We just think that like it's just 
we like you. You haven't built a ramp for me to, to, to access <laughs> Actually, your podcast. It's very inaccessible, the podcast. Yeah, studio. I've been to that studio. It's, it's horrendous. They're, so, isn't they're it? like vertical. Those stairs He's... are horrific. Red couldn't climb those stairs. <laughs> I did. I, I think you the... could do it with a bit of support. I was on Two Vegan Idiots, another good podcast. Oh, I love that yeah, podcast. Right, Julian Dean, Carl Donnelly, very funny people. Oh, they are really funny. I've never done that one. No, it's a really big one to get on, so. Oh, I've got to ask. Yeah, you got to ask. I'll beg, I'll beg. Yeah. But I've got a podcast called Trusty Hugs. Yes. Okay. Well, Helen, that was 1997. You were brilliant. Thank you so much I for doing it. Thank you, fine. Helen. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow. Thank you. Thank you for listening to an episode of The Year Is with me, comedian Bobby Mayer, and my sometimes friend, Red Richardson. This podcast has been produced by our brilliant producer, Jody Vandenberg. Thank you. Thank you.